If you encounter something similar like this, like green lines or green artifacts uh, on your screen, in my case, when I use a video capture card, I'm gonna give you some uh, solutions that might help you fix the issue. I just want to say that for me, when I restarted my computer and also reset the screen on the way, it actually gone away. But for me, the cause for that was actually when I switch uh, the PlayStation 5 from HDR to non-HDR, causing my TCL to switch, of course, the mode of the monitor, and then it actually happened. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that it's directly related to the monitor, but again, there is something that plays here as well, which is kind of the middleman, which is the Elgato uh, capture card. Now, the fact that basically restart fix it tells me that, well, there isn't a broken component here. So we go over all different fixes that might fix it for you with different reasons. So we start with the first one. Something like that or similar might happen if you are quickly switching between HDR and non-HDR uh, using a shortcut. For example, like holding Windows and Alt-B, uh, which often fails to fully load the correct calibrated color profile needed for HDR, and the system is kind of left confused, and the video data scrambles, resulting in those green artifacts. So what you need to do is just go and manually do it in the Windows 11, in this case, Windows 11, it might be, of course, a future operating system, in the Display Settings menu. The other thing is simplifying the console signal. In this case, I'm using the, uh, the Elgato 4K X. I'm using VOR, HDR, ALLM, and when it comes to high bandwidth signal with all of those, uh, this can be kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some lead to some suddenly and unexpected changes in the signal, and therefore the negotiation between the PlayStation 5, in my case, uh, I'm using PlayStation 5, of course, can be another uh, source, uh, and the Elgato or in any other video capture device can fail. So features like, for example, variable refresh rate and 120 hertz output can greatly increase this risk. So what I mean by simplifying the console signal is basically try to stabilize it by disabling complex features like variable refresh rate, 120 hertz output. And this, by the way, can be kind of critical point of failure for capture cards. So temporarily disabling both of these features or others uh, in your uh, console uh, can actually uh, help isolate the problem. And if you know, again, you see that it actually helps, this might be the problem. I just want to add here and probably should put it even first, make sure your software is up to date. So you have the latest drivers, uh, both for your uh, graphics card, uh, your operating system, your uh, video capture card. And of course, if you have an updated firmware update, all of these can actually help maybe find an issue that is actually not directly related to some other things that I mentioned here and might solve the problem because some of kind of uh, incompatibility or maybe a bug that can happen uh, because, you know, the hardware needs to talk with the software and there's some kind of a conflict between them. Or maybe again, just a bug that is in the software itself that just causes this. It's also recommended sometimes to do a clean installation by removing all the other, let's say, leftovers of the previous uh, drivers and just make sure you install it from fresh. So when you are searching for something specific, just search for like clean install or something like that to find if there's specific maybe software that can help clean previous residues of the software and do uh, a fresh install. Sometimes the software itself does offer an option to check something for a clean install, removing the cache and other things related temporary files, and then install the software uh, and drivers all over again from fresh. Now, other thing might be related to the EDID settings. For example, with my Elgato uh, video capture card, I have an option for that to change the EDID. EDID stands for Extended Display Identification Data. It refers to uh, the data and protocol used by the video display, like a monitor, for example, or TV, to communicate uh, its capabilities uh, and characteristic to the source device, uh, like, for example, the, in my case, the console with the PlayStation 5, uh, using the HDMI connection or any other port that you're using to communicate between the two devices. This allows the, uh, the console, for example, to send uh, and configure the optimal video signal uh, that is um, supported by the display. So this includes, for example, resolution, refresh rate, color settings, and so on. Now, even Elgato mentioned and I read it that, again, uh, Elgato recommends, for example, in this case, again, I have an Elgato uh, video capture card, to put it on merged. But they mentioned there is an issue with merge uh, to change that. Now, there's, there's also display option for me, might be for you as well. Uh, and you can even change it, the mode to uh, internal. And this forces the capture card to use a fixed, reliable video profile, uh, eliminating the dynamic negotiation and ensuring a stable signal regardless of your monitor's state changes. 
for example, in, in my case, uh, I just go to Elgato 4K Capture Utility in the settings and I have this option, I can change it. So I recommend checking out for your capture card. For example, in Elgato, they mentioned about the 4K Capture Utility and the EDID, the different setting, what they recommend, what each setting is actually good for, depends of course on your setup, that merges by default. And they mentioned if you have issue to change that. Uh, so again, in this case, this is for Elgato uh, capture card, but you can check for yours uh, and see which uh, one is best for your particular setup. Now, this is what I did to solve it for me and I didn't encounter the issue again and I actually checked. So you can just restart your PC and or just reset your monitor to the default settings or and you can actually also turn the monitor off and on and see if it works. I recommend, of course, turning your monitor off and on first and then decide if you want to reset your monitor settings because you might make changes for it. So you might not encounter this again. So it's worth checking out again if it works for you and doesn't come back, great. Now, in my case, this also might be related to me changing again the signals uh, uh, because of the HDR. So you can, by the way, just disable HDR if it's not a problem for you. Now, I'm not saying that if you change immediately to, again, disable HDR in Windows, it will solve the issue because, again, th the problem exists. But if you see that the problem uh, repeats again and you are comfortable in not using HDR, you can try that. It's not really a fix, but kind of a workaround uh, to prevent this from actually uh, happening again if really it's not a problem not using HDR. It's just kind of temporary solution, let's call it like that. Another thing is that you can actually change or even see that or upgrade your HDMI cable if needed. Like if, you're, for example, you want to uh, connect your uh, PS5 and, and send, let's say, HDR, VRR, and 120 hertz uh, signal, you want to make sure that your cable supports it. Not just the cable, of course, you need to make sure that the port is supported on your monitor as well. Same goes, by the way, to the cable. If you're using, maybe uh, you have a problem with the cable and you change the cable for your capture card, your USB cable. So one thing you can do is just change the cable and again, use the certified wine for high bandwidth and see if it solves the issue. I, for example, made sure that both of the cables, the HDMI cables are certified ultra high speed HDMI 2.1 cables. There's actually one that comes with, with my Elgato 4K X capture card, but the other one I made sure that I bought a U green one that is certified uh, to support the speeds. This is especially true if you're using, uh, uh, we try to record using HDR with your capture card. But sometimes there might be an issue with the cable that is not related, even if the cable is actually one that is certified uh, as ultra high speed HDMI 2.5, there might be an issue with the cable. Now, if you have a very complex setup, you might want to want just restart all devices. This will uh, basically force all devices to renegotiate the signal from scratch. And because there might be so many other things we, uh, that can lead to this, if you have a complex setup, the best thing is just maybe try, try to restart everything and see if the issue repeats itself. One thing you could do, by the way, and it's kind of a good habit, is to avoid toggling HDR mid-session, basically changing it before launching your capture setup. Another thing you could do is just capture uh, cycling your capture card. Uh, which means basically completely turning off a device, waiting a few seconds, and then turning it back on. This forces the hardware to reset all internal processes, clear temporary memory, and re-establish a first connection or connections. And this can solve several issues because, again, when you... Um, when the capture card, like for example, in my case, the Elgato uh, 4KX and the complex video signals like resolution, frame rate, HDR metadata, color space, etc., uh, when you toggle HDR or switch input, the car might uh, misinterpret the new signal, freeze or buffer corrupted frames, or fail to renegotiate HDMI and check properly. And power cycling clears all that out and lets the card start uh, fresh. And the way that you do it is you unplug the USB cable from your PC or console if connected directly, uh, unplugging the HDMI cables, both input, again, from the console and output to the monitor or your TV and waiting like between 10 to 15 seconds. This will let the capacitor discharge and memory clear and then plug everything back in, the HDMI cable from the, for example, PlayStation 5 to the capture card and HDMI from the capture to the display and then the USB back into the PC. Now, if your capture card has a power button or external power source, turn it off there too. Now, if you see this, of course, on Windows, like you see here, of course, it's uh, related to the GPU. The GPU is responsible for drawing everything you see on the screen, including, of course, the Windows UI. Now, if a distortion overlays the, the interface, like you see here, it means that the GPU was rendering corrupted frames. 
Now, the green lines could be also the results of corrupted uh, video memory from the VRAM, especially if the GPU was stressed or misconfigured during the HDR toggle. The HDR or toggling HDR forces the GPU to reconfigure its output pipeline, and if the driver didn't handle it properly, it could have glitched the entire desktop rendering layer. So how it's related to the capture card in this case? Well, if the capture card was connected and active, it might have triggered the HDR toggle or introduced signal mismatch that confused the GPU. And in this case, uh, the green lines weren't coming from the capture card's feed. There were symptoms of the GPU struggling to render the desktop correctly after a display mode change. This is why if you have this issue, a restart can solve this issue. Now you might say, well, maybe the monitor is responsible for this. Well, the monitor also sends EDID data to the GPU to tell it what formats it supports, like the resolution, refresh rate, HDR capability, and so on. So if there's some problem with the EDID, like it's buggy, updated, or other issues, when you toggle HDR, it might confuse the GPU, leading to rendering glitches, uh, like something similar that you see here. Now, it's worth mentioning that not all monitors handle HDR transitions smoothly. Some it, uh, kind of uh, briefly uh, misreport their capabilities or fail to switch color modes properly. And this can cause windows to apply incorrect, uh, for example, tone mapping or color profiles resulting in visual artifacts. Now, in my case, it was half the screen. So this is kind of strongly suggest that this is, uh, um, this is a GPU rendering fault probably related to how the uh, graphics pipeline uh, handles display buffers or screen regions during mode transition, like HDR toggling. So let's say if one buffer gets corrupted, say during an HDR toggle in my case, uh, you can actually see artifacts or just part of the screen affected and not the other. Now, how it can be actually related to capture devices as well. Um, capture devices use separate rendering pipelines for each half of the screen, sometimes, depends of course on the capture card, uh, and a mismatch in color space or resolution between those pipelines can cause one side to glitch. So you might say like there's the monitor might be involved here, but not directly. Now, I just want to say that it might not even relate it to the capture card. There might be an issue some with the connectors, for example, of your GPU. And maybe the GPU itself is faulty in some way. It might be related to the motherboard or to the RAM. So there might be other things that might affect and result in this that aren't mentioned here. Might be even things uh, kind of underneath related to the BIOS settings or just, you know, you need to update the bias in order to make sure that there aren't any issues that can lead to this indirectly. But for me, it never happened. It started only when I got the capture card and I started kind of uh, toying around with HDR, toggling it on and off. So definitely was something there with the communication between the two when I switched things on and off that eventually led to this issue. Hopefully some of the things will help you out solve the issue. I'm just sharing what I know, what I've read, and hopefully something will fit if you see this type of uh, uh, problem either in the preview or you see this in Windows as overlay. Hopefully some of the things will solve your issue. Thanks for watching.